All right. Allegedly, we're live. Give me two seconds. I'm going to have some editing to do this week, aren't I? That's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, God, I'm drinking a heavy ass beer. Evil gets drunk tonight. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> what am I? I I'm not going to tell you my beer yet. I'm going to make you wait. All right. We are live. What is up? Give me two seconds. Sorry. Just kidding. And... Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another issue of Hops Geek News. We are a podcast that talks about comic books. We talk about movies, TV shows, all of the above. And then most importantly, we, of course, drink a beer of the week. So first things first, some housekeeping items to get through. We have recently made our own platform for Hops Geek News. We were part of the Hops News, you know, thing. We broke off. We're still doing Hops News. Don't get it wrong. But we have now put Hops Geek News on its own thing. We are sponsored by Spreaker Prime. So they are hosting us. They're all that kind of stuff. They have a sponsorship with us. So congrats. We are sponsored in a roundabout way. Also, that means you can go ahead on any podcasting platform Search Hops Geek News now. That's where you can find our episodes. Rate us, review us, share us, all of that good, good stuff. And then, of course, Hops Geek News on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Help us Was grow it our YouTube. Chris from Geek Peak says, sub us. Yes, sub, sub to your homies. We are there. We have to sell and, a piece of our soul every time we say things like that. Yes, so. every time I'm like, like and subscribe, that means I'm selling a piece of uh, It sounds like my kids What's when they pretend they're YouTube it's famous. Awful. But that's what Hi. you got to do. That's the price you got to pay to not work a nine to five these days, right? That said, today's episode is going to be all about horror movies with a twist. So a lot of good horror movies that we just unexpectedly have twists and things with them. We're going to try not to cool. spoil so you can view it as recommendations. Yes, we will do our best. No promises, especially as I, I drink promise. my Matt beer doesn't. of the week. I saw his notes. <laughs> Beware. <laughs> <laughs> my he done spoiled shit for me already oh my god you haven't seen any <laughs> horror movie what am i supposed to do how do i live like this <laughs> what am i what do you want for me uh anyways my beer of the week is from portland maine it is a collaboration beer so this is from lone pine brewing in a collaboration with a very very good donut spot in portland maine called holy donut it's an imperial stout with donuts and toasted coconut this is called holy donut it's wicked good brewed in collaboration with our friends at holy donut crafted using dark chocolate toasted coconut donuts baked right here in portland along with regular toasted coconut man there's a lot of coconut drink every time i say coconut are you drunk yet coconut <laughs> put, put the lime in it <laughs> it is it is i don't see the percentage on here however i can only assume that being that oh it's 10.5 percent. yeah 10.5 percent. and I'm evil it's drunk tonight end. yes dun, dun, that's dun. what i'm drinking lauren what are you drinking i'm not drinking anything yet but i'm pouring myself a little gourds gone wild oh my god that beer is so good i got you one today <gasps> you've said it the past two years on top of that oh my god is this a tradition is this our first i tradition? guess it is now <laughs> so this is tampa bay Be uh, brewing company which if um you caught our live hops news show we were talking about gabf the great american beer festival and this brewery well the pumpkin beer do they have i don't think they have a pumpkin section at gabf for shame Ooh. but um this is one of those beers that a lot of people know of that is it's actually a good pumpkin because i'm very particular about pumpkin beers some of them are just too over the top um but this one's usually good i haven't tried it yet but i'm about to find out uh but it is oh it's only six percent yeah oh, look at that it does contain lactose i didn't remember it containing lactose but i got it in my sweet pumpkin glass yeah well that's awesome. I can't wait to get that beer. That beer is so good. Ooh, actually, it does smell like lactose now. Now I wonder if they've had that every year or I just I gonna, smell it because on. I read it. I was going to say, is lactose new? Because I don't remember lactose. Yeah. Gotta it be tastes new. like a creamsicle. Gotta be new. This is, yeah, this is not what it's usually like. This is like a creamsicle. Interesting. Well, uh, it looks like somebody messed up on some things last week. So why don't we go into our what have we fucked up on last week segment? So... Uh, I don't know if this is a fucked up on. It was a, oh, that's a good thing to look into. I'm still writing news. There was a lot of news this week. Okay, I got all the news. news. 
I know. I thought after like D23 and, and Comic-Con and everything, we wouldn't have that much news. So one of the things we talked about that, you know, we were thinking like how many celebrities have played zombies on The Walking Dead? Because last week we talked about zombies. Um, I don't have this. This isn't an exhaustive list, a list, but I thought it was some fun ones. Um, Sam Witwer was a zombie. He was actually yeah. uh, one of the soldier zombies. I saw a picture of him like right next to Rick. And if you don't know who he is, he was in the first season of Dexter. He claimed to be the ice truck killer. He was in um, oh, yeah. Small Bill. And he voices Darth Maul in the Clone Wars. Kenobi. Kenobi. He does. Uh, he also voices Star Killer in the video games. So Force yeah, Unleashed. obviously he has That's right. been amazing. But he's the one that really gave us that like Kenobi. So uh, yeah, he was a zombie. Scott Ian, the drummer for Anthrax, has been a zombie. Everybody's Heinz Ward from the zombie. Pittsburgh Steelers. And His I brain was English anyways wrong about this chris hardwick didn't make or hard rock chris hardwick did make a zombie cameo Ooh. uh greg nicotero was the name i kept thinking of the guy with the long hair that talks about all the special effects and would constantly reference george romero and talking dead he actually and he's directed many episodes he's actually has been a zombie as well and the last one which i had no idea and was very surprised johnny depp played a zombie did he really in the walking dead yeah johnny and depp? there's a picture where his head's like cut off are you sure it wasn't like, just it's... him during his relationship with amber heard so he's playing himself <laughs> well, i mean it was just a head <laughs> and it was just a poop but uh oh my god amber turd all right <laughs> I don't want to go to <laughs> so Anyways, I, that was my we messed up watching? slash look into which we've been slacking on that section we have we uh slacking or have we been on our absolute game but I think sometimes I say I'll look into things and I forget. And I actually haven't listened back to our episodes the last couple of weeks. I'm going to be honest. I've just been so busy. I haven't listened to like any podcasts lately. So I don't know. I don't do with that information what you will. I literally like looked at that and I was like, hey, we talked about that walking dead. Guys, this is where the audience, you, the audience comes into play, right? Call us out. Let us know what we mess up on. Like we love that stuff. We need it because that's how we grow. That's how we stay humble, right? Like I said, Spreaker has now they're sponsoring us. So we got to stay humble in this world. I know there's like eight other million podcasts that are also sponsored by them, but you know what guys, we have to stay humble in this world. So call us out on our bullshit. You sound like Tim McGraw. Always stay humble and kind. I was thinking Kendrick Lamar. Sit down, oh. be humble. Well, okay. Tale of two lives. So right? What have you read or watched this week? I don't think we can talk She Hulk if we're recording live the same. No, came out. so we are not going to talk She Hulk. That'll be next week, maybe. But uh, I loved yeah, it. it. I finished. Oh yeah. Oh god. I thought you were saying she, like they nailed the finale. Like nailed it. Good job, She Hulk. Oh no, well, yes. But I've oh, I you're finished. Watching, nailed nailed it. It. The kids, the kids really love the show. Nailed it. So we finished the newest season. Really great. I love it. My goal in life is to make this podcast big enough to be a host on Nailed It, or you know, a guest host. And I also love to bake, so maybe I'll be a contestant. But then that means I suck at baking, so I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Anyways, I watched a little movie. It was not a good movie. It was the decision of my wife. She wanted to watch Terror Train because we were just sitting there like, what stupid, cheesy horror movie can we watch tonight? And she stumbled upon Jamie Lee Curtis's 1980s. No, it was actually the year 1980 film Terror Train. And uh, boy, was that a movie. <laughs> it's it was nothing like halloween in 1978 she was riding those coattails pretty hard and that's why they wanted her on this i can assume it's about a group of college kids who are all medical students and it begins with jamie lee and friends playing a prank on one kid that the kid doesn't appreciate fast forward it says six years later or something like that which is interesting they're getting ready to graduate oh, college like House of the dragon yeah so they're getting ready to uh graduate i guess Medical school takes a long time to graduate. I don't know. I joined the military for a reason. I'm stupid. And they uh, go on this train to party and celebrate their last night together, essentially. And it was just so awful and cheesy. And the kills were hard. You liked awful and cheesy. Oh, it was it was enjoyable. Don't get me wrong. We enjoyed ourselves very much. We drinks. We you know we had some wine. We watched this movie, but it was not good. Oh God, it wasn't good. The the mannequin heads that they had and like the murders and the kills in this movie. It was of all the movies I've watched, this was one of them. So 
there's that there you go. uh i watched halloween 2018 to get ready for uh tonight just released on peacock and in theaters halloween ends which apparently people are just ripping apart you know what going with no expectations i'm gonna watch it after this podcast and we'll see what happens i watched andor which if you're not so caught up on them. andor okay so i'm not gonna spoil it however i will say this andor is peak star wars this is Ooh. the standard for Star Wars television going forward and maybe even movies because this movie is absolutely incredible. It or it show. show, I should say. Yes, it, it's incredible because the the way just everything's portrayed. It's it's set up during the beginning of the rebellion. This is Cassian Andor in the first year of the rebellion. So it's very suspenseful. They shoot on location, everything, the way it's shot. It's just so ungodly good that if you're not watching Andor, please give it a chance. Watch it. It's, it's the best thing that's not related to the force, right? Of course, Jedi oh, lightsabers. Yeah. So this is the best star Wars related thing that is not directly force related. And I love it. And I want more of it. So I'll leave it at that. And then the, I mean, final the first three have been phenomenal. I've just kind yeah. of gotten behind on it. No, that that's fine. This this latest episode, it was emotional. It was emotional for various different reasons. And I'll leave it at that. I also, last thing that I watched, what, I watched a couple of things. Night of the Living Dead. I watched that. I watched Sleepy Hollow. I've because, never seen that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've seen Sleepy Hollow. So I actually watched Sleepy Hollow, 1999 Sleepy Hollow, Tim Burton film starring Johnny Depp. And That's from 1999? That movie's it that is. old? It Holy holds shit. up surprisingly well. And the kills are great. The the this is, this is one of Tim Burton's last great films he made. Now, he made a couple movies after that are really good. But... This film is awesome. I forgot how good it was because I guessed it on the Wheel of Horror podcast, which that will come out later this month. And Johnny Depp's great in it. It's a very good like who done it kind of thing. Very mm -hmm. suspenseful. The kills are great. The headless horsemen go around just chopping heads off for a 1999 film. This movie holds up surprisingly well, and I think that's because Tim Burton uses a lot of practical effects, which practical is a way to go, of course. So right. it it's like movie. why Jurassic Park holds up so well. Exactly. I mean, Lord of the Rings, Jurassic Park, this movie, they they hold up because of practical. Uh, ba uh, Christian Bale, Batman. A hundred percent. So that was a Sleepy Hollow. If you haven't watched that in years, I recommend you go and watch that. Really good. And then the last thing I watched was this movie called The Cursed. It's a 2021 film set in France in like the 1800s. And it's about... Frenchmen who do some things to some gypsies and from there they're kind of cursed and things like that. It was okay. It, it, I don't, I mean, Chris from the geek peak recommended it. Maybe I just, I think with horror movies, I don't know why any other movie I can shut my brain off and really just be like, yeah, I enjoyed that. For some reason, horror movies, I have such standards with, which is know. should be the opposite because exactly horror movies yeah. are cheesy and, crappy more often than not but to me i'm like uh this wasn't good gross and it was okay i i don't yeah, think it was all great bad but we have, I, we'll talk about some good ones in a little bit but yeah so that that's all i've been watching i haven't read anything i haven't had the time so what about you a little bit of house of the dragon um i'm almost done with smallville i'm so behind on uh, house of the dragon so behind yeah okay well so you're on a whole different cast than I am exactly. because all these damn time jumps, it's like, and then they keep naming everybody the same shit or similar shit. So it's like, I'm sorry. Wait, I, I know what's okay, going on and like, I know what happens. I'm just so bad. <laughs> like every episode, it's like you all of a sudden have to like start from scratch about who's who. Yeah. Well, this um, is the last time jump for a while, oh, like forever. Goodness. So now it's, you're getting into the war. Ah. Uh. And uh, I'll do a quick piece of news real quick. So George R. R. Martin has said that House of Dragon should take four seasons. So we shall expect four Ooh, seasons unless it jumps the shark and they cut well, it off sooner. You know what? I'd rather we end it sooner just because I don't want to. On a high note? Because you don't want another. I, I can't do another Game of Thrones situation. Game of Thrones finale. I can't do this. I can't live this way. But this one, okay, the finale with this one, it's like you know where they're going. So you can't. I don't think that there can be such sheer disappointment. No. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I just want him to finish the damn series because I stopped in the middle of the second book when I was like, well, what? He hasn't even finished this. I'm done for now. Yeah, that's true. All right. Um, 
The main thing I watched was the Winchesters premiered this week. Yes, so it, was it did. The very first episode of the Winchesters. Uh, anybody who doesn't know what that is, it is the prequel to Supernatural. Um, a lot of people are already oh, giving it shit house. before they saw it. Uh, Jensen Ackles and his wife started it, Daniil Ackles. And it... Um, Okay, so they're giving it shit because they're like, oh, he's going to ruin 15 years of canon. And he's come out and said, I'm not going to do that. And what he uses, and they talked about it at New York Comic Con, is they use the disappearing picture thing from Back to the Hold Future. Hold on. Hold on. They're yelling at the man who was literally in all 15 seasons of oh, this Oh, yeah. Show? Anything he posts or anybody posts about the Winchesters, half of it is like praise and half of it is like, I'm not even uh, going to watch first that. First and foremost, Meg Donnelly of the Zombies franchise. Oh, my daughter pointed you, that out. She's in this show. However, people are really pressing Jensen Ackles, who, I don't know, he was on 15 seasons of Supernatural saying he's going to ruin canon. You don't think this man knows what's canon and what's not? Well, if anything, this man was disappointed with the season or series exactly. finale, which a lot of fans were. So if he can do anything to fix this, go for it. And he's the narrator of the show. Okay, I was going to so, say, does this take place after Supernatural? No, it's a prequel. It's about oh, his okay. parents meeting. So what a lot of people have shit for is there are storylines so in Supernatural that already are not consistent with the basic premise of the Winchesters. But they have said, like, don't go anywhere you'll see what we're doing and how we're doing it by episode 13. But this episode, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. There were so many Easter eggs. There was a, the boys Easter egg. What? Yeah. They, I mean, I couldn't have been a coincidence because at some point Mary calls. He was John, literally in it. Spoiler, I'll do. <laughs> well, so John, we all know he was a military man. He was in the Marines because he uses some of his Marine. Like even in the very first episode, there's like coordinates. Like in real life? Like, oh, no, no, no. I mean, oh. I don't know. I don't know much about Jeffrey Dean Morgan in real life. <laughs> Maybe. But uh, I don't think he fought in Vietnam. I'm guessing he was a little too young. Are you sure? Uh, <laughs> but in the very first episode, they're like, oh, that's that Marine shit dad always does. And it's the coordinates, which he there was a nod to that in the first episode. There were so many subtle Easter eggs. They did a really good job. But it's he just got home from war and he meets Mary. So that's the beginning oh. of their relationship. So is Meg Donnelly the, the mom? Or? Yeah, she's the mom. And then oh, so weird. when Tom Welling shows up, he's Jensen's grandpa. Oh, because I was about to say playing, that's weird if that's the dad. That's even weird. Yeah, no, he's playing. Well, the dad, the kid who's playing the dad actually looks a lot like Sam in real life, okay. like Jared Padalecki. So that was good casting. No, they both did a great job. A ton of Easter eggs, a lot of fun. Um, any, you know, I highly recommend it if you're a Supernatural fan. My yeah. husband and daughter are on season one of Supernatural and they watched it with me and there were quite a few things that went over their head because they were doing Easter eggs too much later. You and seasons. me both, brothers. So... Yeah, go watch it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Carrie wants to watch it, and I have it on Plex, so maybe we'll, we'll watch it. I, tried I actually it watched it live oh. on the CW on the antenna. Shit. You know what we have probably to won't do? do again. We have to offline record our spoiler-free thoughts because we saw VHS 99, which we can't talk about until the 17th. So we can't talk about that live here, but we do have thoughts. Now we're going to some thoughts. news. All right, so let's go to the, some news. Marvel has shifted some things because they have put Blade on hold, which they lost. Bossom Tariq was their director. They lost him a couple of weeks ago. And now in an effort to really nail the director portion of this movie. And there were some other things that came out about the film. So right now the movie is on hold and the new upcoming Marvel slate has shifted to quantum mania, February 17th, 2023. Our boy, I've seen the leaked trailer. Not looking good for our boy Scott Lang. Also, if you've seen pictures of Jonathan Majors, that dude's a fucking snack. Like, oh my God. That guy is built like a Greek goddamn that god. Kang? Yeah. Kang is oh, yeah, goddamn sculpted his, from his, Marvel. Yeah. He's on that Marvel's that Marvel that, diet. Well, he's also playing out. in a movie, I think ha has him as a boxer. But like he's gonna come in there and he's about to the Kang train is coming. Okay. <laughs> Well, shout out to Sean. Well, you know, you see so many what? like look, Chris, Chris Pratt is a great example. Like he got in shape just to play Star Lord, and then all of a sudden he's in all these other movies. He wouldn't have gotten them as Parks and Rec Chris Pratt. That's true. But uh, yeah, my boy Kang, woof, that boy is stacked. He's Anyways, we're not here to shape. talk about Kang's physique. 
We're here to talk about the Marvel. I think you slate. might be. I don't know. I, I might be swooning a little bit here. He's I just, mean, She Hulk's over. You're moving on to King the Conqueror. God, She Hulk will live on forever. She smash. Oh, wish she would smash this match. <laughs> Some of her comments <laughs> were amazing. <laughs> I was dying laughing at the finale, and that's all we'll say for now. Okay. My wife's probably listening. Like, excuse me, you wish she what? Nothing. I'm so sorry. Like, also smash Josh and punch me in the face. Comments. Punch me in the face, you know, smash me that way. Any, anyways, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 will release May 5th, 2023. The Marvels, July 28th, 2023. Captain America, New World Order, May 3rd, 2024. Thunderbolts, July 26th, 2024. Now, allegedly, Blade will now release September 6th, 2024. It was supposed to come out in November of 2023. Not the case anymore, which sucks, because I'm but looking forward to Blade. Deadpool was supposed to come out. Lauren, oh my God, you know what we didn't talk about? Hmm. We watched Werewolf by Night. Oh yeah, we did. We watched Werewolf by Night. Spoilers, three, two, one. Marvel, sp- Marvel presentations, like special presentations, is the way to go. I absolutely love and adored Werewolf by Night. It That's was so I good. Just a supernatural season That's four true. episode five the monster maybe movie. i'll surprise you one day maybe i'll surprise maybe. You. next week you're gonna be like what'd you watch i'll be like supernatural season four episode whatever <laughs> you just said but werewolf by night was amazing man thing okay ted okay oh my gosh that was, ted was awesome. adorable also bloodstone and like the the wolf transformation sequence and then the f- ensuing fight sequence that was rad i loved it it was a lot of fun um I didn't really know what to expect or how they were going to do it, but I love that they showed the the Marvel character like silhouette at the beginning because it was like, yes, these are tied together. We're not going to tell you how yet or what's going on, but yeah, they're tied together. Yeah. It's just so fun. You have this legal comedy and you have this black and white show and you have, you know, WandaVision and then you have all we're these so different things. Spoiled and blessed. Connected. It's connected. Yeah. We're connected. It's all connected. Yeah. No, but no, I, yeah, I thought that, that I loved um, the guy who played the werewolf. I thought he was amazing. Uh, Jack, I want to say Jack Terrier. What's his name? I don't remember names because I am stupid. Jack Russell. Because it's like a play on, what's well, apparently it was unintentional because like a Russell Terrier. I was just uh, thinking but, that. My first thought was Jack Russell Terrier? What? Right. So they claim <laughs> that that was a coincidence that he was named Jack Russell. But yeah, because he turns into a dog. It's, it's, oh man, they go into, so it's it's the Bloodstone Stone is getting passed around and everybody convenes to they're all monster hunters and it's all black and white, which is really sick in its own right. The black and white works really well with this. It's an hour long. So carve out an hour of your time. I don't want to spoil it any further for anybody who maybe hasn't watched it yet, but just know that it's, it's some of the best. It it was one of my favorite Marvel properties to come out in recent in phase four. Like I have that She Hulk and Shang Chi as my top four Phase Four projects. Ooh, I'd have to think about mine. I always forget Spider Man's Phase Four, so whatever. Oh yeah, well Spider Man's like in a category all on its own. I, that, yeah, see, thank you. I I feel like Spider Man's a foregone. Like I can't say Spider Man. That's cheating. Right, because it's just too good. <laughs> it's like sometimes anyway. I feel like when I say like End Game is one of my favorites, it's like cheating. Yeah, it's just like, well, it's like, yeah, okay, no, I'll say no, Winter Soldier uh, because I don't want to be too trendy and you're cheating. just low, low hanging fruit there. So, yeah. Anyways, the long awaited Deadpool was supposed to release on September 6th. That's now moved to November 8th, 2024. Which means Kaylee, my daughter, I, her and I are going to have some beers in the movie theater oh, together because she's going to be 21 by the time this comes out. I can't believe that. Wow. And I've never let her see a Deadpool movie in theater, so she'll get to see her first Deadpool movie well, in the theater now. I can't live like this. Stop. I'm going to have a midlife crisis uh, just sitting here listening to this Be conversation. Exactly. Like, Fantastic Four will release Valentine's Day 2025 because nothing says I love you, baby. Like watching Reed Richards and Sue Storm on the big screen finally in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And the last but not least, we have Avengers King Dynasty, May 2nd, 2025. And you thought you were getting two Avengers films in the year 2025? Well, think again, my friends, because Avengers, Avengers? Whole year, those bastards. Secret Wars, May 1st, 2026. Those it's going to be Infinity things. War and Endgame all over again. Yes. You're going to have to wait a whole year. Whole year. You knew, though. 
and they have okay. nothing planned and well well i mean who knows by Not, then but well we don't know when armor wars will come out now will armor wars maybe take oh, blade spot next november because that was be a, movie, a movie right now exactly is armor wars going to slide over i think that's a strong possibility especially with riri showing up in a month less than a month in black panther which oh, that Ironheart. Oh, i can't wait but yeah i mean it's very possible anyways Moving on from news. Well, we still have news. So Gangs of New York. Do you remember that movie? Have you seen that movie? I do. That was like a two VHS movie back in the day. Back in the day. You remember when you had to switch VHS tapes with Titanic and Gangs of New York? Yeah. Well, there's a TV series in the works with Martin Scorsese is set to direct the first two episodes. Uh, I don't know any more than that. Didn't really say any more than that, but I'm very interested to see what they do because that movie is fantastic. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, that's one of his first big movies. It's got a pretty stacked cast as well. So Daniel Day-Lewis plays the butcher. Highly recommend if you lived under a rock and haven't seen this movie, go and do it right now. Aside from that, Liam Neeson's in talks to star in a Naked Gun film. If you remember Naked Gun, that sounds familiar to you. That's because... I, that's really funny. <laughs> you put that in your Don't news? call me Shirley. Yes. Uh, so that is going to be coming out. Leslie Nielsen played in those movies, the Naked Gun films. And you might have, again, uh, yes, and don't call me Shirley. That's from those Naked Gun films. So I guess we're going to reboot it with Liam Neeson, allegedly. So Adam Copeland, a.k.a. Edge in the WWE, Jessica Parker Kennedy, and Suzanne Cryer have been cast in the Percy Jackson series. So Adam will be playing Aries. Uh, I believe Jessica will be playing Echidna. I can't pronounce that right. And Suzanne will be playing Medusa. Maybe I've got those two backwards. But Percy Jackson, I have read the books. The books are great, especially if you're into mythology. And so it's cool to see Edge, who has come back to wrestling. He wasn't supposed to wrestle ever again. Tim, this is your cameo. Tim, you know all about Edge, how he broke his neck. Didn't wrestle for a while. He recently came back to WWE, but I believe he's setting up to retire again. And he starred in the TV show Vikings and a couple other TV shows. So now he's going to be in the, the Percy Jackson series, which is exciting. And then my last news. We've gone full circle, folks. Only now Netflix will be launching their ad-supported platform on November 3rd, which $6.99 is the basic you can get. You get ads with Netflix now. Luckily, if you have T-Mobile, T-Mobile pays for your stuff. But ads are now coming to Netflix. They have become the very thing that they have swore to defend against. Dun, dun, dun. What is it? You live, you be the hero long enough, you become the villain. You either live long enough. You die you the hero. You either die a hero or you live, or you live long, long enough, enough to see yourself become the villain. There wow, you go. it took me a minute. Jesus. Look at that. Blockbuster died a hero. Netflix has become the villain. And now Blockbuster... I can't believe Netflix has a TV or a movie about. The oh my God. Blockbuster. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Netflix is about to have a movie about blockbuster come out on their platform. So they're making like, fun. They or they're making money off of the right. <laughs> it's, wow. It's so savage. It's Damn. That's like savage. robbing someone, killing them and then selling their shit. Exactly. It's ridiculous. I can't Do you, so there was a this. period of time where Blockbuster was trying and I actually loved this model where like it was an it was like a Netflix account and you could but you could go to Blockbuster and switch out the movies there if you wanted to, or you could just drop them in the mailbox. Well, they were the and first that was, to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. We did that for a little bit because we could walk up and down the Blockbuster aisles and I like miss those days, Chinese right? food and Blockbuster. And like, we'll see what the problem was is Blockbuster actually said that the future wasn't in streaming. So they abandoned it. But then Netflix was like, okay. And came in and it turns out well, it was, Netflix was right. Showed up too. Yeah. Well, I mean, Netflix, do you remember when you would the DVD, the they'd mail the stuff and you'd mail it back. Yeah, and all I vividly that. remember. I Which, watched, honestly, I watched Dexter like that. Well, it sucked, though, because in the early days of Netflix, when you actually had to do that, you had to wait for the DVD or video game. Are you to kidding? Come. It was exciting. Oh, I get to go check my mail. I'm going to have a Dexter no, DVD in there. But it was exciting. But at the same time, well, because you had movie nights like the movie and it came. Was right. And it was cheaper than, you know, four dollars yeah, to go rent a new movie. I still miss it. 
But I think oh. it was it was Redbox too. I think put the, it was. the nail in the coffin as well. Uh, but, by the way, hey, Clerks no. Three is now available on digital. So yes. I'm gonna watch okay. that tomorrow. So oh, get some tissues, and not in the fun way. I'm gonna be jer- oh, not in the fun way. Okay. Nope. It's not all dick and fart jokes anymore, kids. It's not. And you would know that if you listen to our interview with Brian O'Halloran and Jeff Anderson, a.k.a. Randall and Dante. So Doctor Who, the power of the Doctor trailer came out and the show comes October 23rd. And we will be saying goodbye to number 13. Jodie Whittaker. Uh, The Boys Social Media has introduced two new soups for season four. We get Sister Sage, played by Susan Hayward, and Firecracker, played by Valerie Curry. I don't know who either of those people are. They're new to me, so. But they're going to be soups, so it should be fun. Doom Patrol season four, part one, comes out December 8th on HBO Max. Very excited for that. That's one of the few HBO Max shows that haven't taken a total shit. Uh, the Oregon Trail is being turned into a movie musical, so I cannot oh wait for the God. song "You Have Died of Dysentery." <laughs> I know I need that to be the title track, like dysentery. <laughs> right. So, I mean, honestly, if, when I first read that, part of me wanted, you know, I feel like years ago I would have been like, "Okay, that's not true," but today, who knows? Um, my next piece of news is I thought I had said this last week, but I guess it actually came out this weekend, but we had just talked about it. Tom Welling is joining the cast of the Winchesters yes. and will be playing Mary's father. We did talk who about is also last week. Okay. We did talk about it last week. We did. Yeah. Okay. But don't expect him in the first episode. Um, the Crow reboot has wrapped production. Yes. DC Titan season four, part one comes out November 3rd. Yes. I'm conflicted on if I'm going to watch it or not. Um, I reached out about press release, so maybe you get to watch some screeners. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goody. Uh, you know, maybe it'll come around. I just, I really didn't like last I also season. reached out about Doom Patrol, which Doom Patrol also is releasing December 8th. Yeah. Season four. And both season fours for these, or whatever seasons are out now, they're going to be part twos. Yeah. Um, so Ezra Miller has returned for reshoots. I don't know what that means. Are they bringing him back to write him out? Are they bringing him back um, to just do reshoots? They better be launching his stupid, or sorry, them. They better be launching them into the fucking sun. That's all I got to say. <laughs> just have Superman fly him out. Uh, uh, Good Omen season two is coming out summer 2023. We don't have a specific date, but mm. uh, this is for all uh, anybody heading to Epcot this holiday season. Cosmic Rewind will be getting a holiday makeover before the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special comes out. Nah, hold on. Speaking of Disney hiked their fucking prices up. So if you're heading to Epcot or Disney or anything, a, a lightsaber <sighs> costs $250 now. And then the Genie Pass has just gone up in prices too. Like They're hiking wait. everything up. It's bullshit. I quit. Stupid All Disney, stuff. man. Like even their little droids that are usually 10 are now 12. Well, that's like, what I'm saying. Like their lightsabers now 250 and then the genie pass, which are only they like, they opened up the genie pass for seasonal I hate things. Genie pass. I hope genie I do dies too. Are horrific. But now they're charging up prices Fuck during genie. the seasonal times. Like, no, nah. Disney, you're not poor. Like we're poor. Think well, the, the only con- thing that I ever want to defend it for is like these parks are never empty. It's not like they're upping the prices and people aren't going. They're going. They're just complaining about it. We're and still like going to go and complain. Like, when I'm in start. line for a ride, which we do not go on rides nearly as much as we used to because you used to get well, three, you can't now. three fast passes. Exactly. You get nothing free. Or you had to be handicapped still... to go in the fast pass lane. No, they, they got rid of that a while ago. Well, I was saying, or you used to have to be handicapped to go right, in the fast pass Right, but they got rid of that lane. because people were literally hiring handicapped people to go in the lines with them. Look, I can't but hate that's actually a genius idea. These but. genie plus lines though, these lightning lane lines, there there's a ton of people in them. It's like so it's, and I can't it used to be twenty dollars per ticket, but now it's gone up to like twenty five. It's insane. What and if you have a family of five, that's an extra hundred fucking dollars. Exactly. And the tickets, like if you do a three day park hopper, it's like a thousand dollars for a family of four. So when I think rise is now gonna be twenty five dollars, but it's like Ugh. it's like a carnival, but you have to pay to get in and you have to pay for the rise. Pay to win, man. Wait, like, Welcome to the, new, the new age, I guess, right? It's insane. But I mean, as long as people are paying it, know. they're gonna keep doing it. Let's, and I can't knock a family who's like, We're coming here once ever and we want to well, go on all these rides, so we're gonna pay to go on them. No, I you're, I don't blame you're them. right. I don't know. Let's 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 all right, we can spend all day. Let's take the let's anger get down. To the, Take the anger down. Cheetle. Let's get through the news and let's get to the good horror stuff. Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds are doing a Christmas movie together called Spirited. 
it looks like to me, I watched the trailer. It looks like a funny version of Christmas Carol. Um, this reminds me, did you see that the Grinch is going to be a horror movie coming out December 8th as well? Yeah. I don't like this. Uh, I cannot Grinch. wait to watch the Grinch murder Cindy Lou Who, but that's just the me. whole point of the Grinch is that his heart grows. Not in this version. I don't like it. Dune part Anyways. two will be releasing two weeks early on Blade's original date of November 3rd, 2023. Trick or treat comics are actually being released. So if you like the, Ooh, the movie Trick I or Treat, I guess there's comics and they're releasing them in an omnibus just before Halloween. I'm going to have to pick it up. Dead to me season. Final season starts November 17th. Spinal. That's one with, um, I like that one. It's got Velma in it and Christina Applegate. That's fair. Uh, it's a great pumpkin. Charlie Brown is not airing live this year, but Apple TV will have it. Oh Guillermo God. I got to pay to win again. Del Toro is doing a Pinocchio movie and it's coming to Netflix on December 9th. Cartoon network is just, merging. Hold on. W we just release a Pinocchio. On yeah. Disney, Disney plus did. I'm I feel so like that confused. always happens. Like you I'm have so ants confused. and you had bug life. Okay. I'm just so confused. Anyways, continue. Uh, the penguin movie or the penguin TV show will take place a week after the Batman. Uh, George R. Oh, I said that one before. Uh, Ahmed Best, who played everyone's favorite Star Wars character, Jar Jar Binks, revealed a script for his yes. stage show about his Star Wars experience. Good, good, because people almost ran that man to suicide. So I hope you feel awful. Yeah, Natalie Portman's talked about that, too. How she was not a fan of how horrible people were to him. I love Natalie Portman. I simps. Never mind. Continue. That's all I got. All right. Well. Let's go on a main topic. So we're going to be talking some horror movies with a good or maybe not so good twist. Now we're going to do our best not to spoil. I have just spoiled like eight movies for Lauren in the notes. I know not. I need to remember that Lauren hasn't seen a single movie in her entire existence. And I've seen them all apparently. So like, I can't, I can't believe she hasn't even seen Friday or nightmare on Elm street. I mean, she probably hasn't seen Friday the 13th either, but not the original. No. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh God, it hurts sometimes. I've seen all the Halloween. Well, not all the oh, Halloween. It hurts to sometimes do this show, but just know <laughs> through the pain we persevere. So, uh, all right. Well, first things first. We're gonna kick it off with the movie, the Scream franchise. I can I can say the Scream franchise overall. So, I agree. Why don't you go ahead and kick us off with Other than the Scream? Last one. Um, so Scream. I got some fun facts. I think everybody's probably seen these movies and knows the basic premise. Um. All of them except the last one I felt like were a big surprise to me. The last one, I guessed correctly. Uh, this, no, so yeah, in, I think we all did going to that movie. We were like, oh, this exactly. person's definitely the killer. And guess what? There was only one extra surprise about that. Right. And like, I don't want to say that because that's a newer one. Um, but yeah, sure. all the screen movies, the second one, you know, blew my mind. I mean, the, the and then the one with um, Julia Roberts niece. That one surprised yeah. me. Yeah, that, one got that me. was with uh, Hayden Panettiere, and yeah. Uh oh, I didn't remember her being in that. Save the cheerleader, save the world. Yes, yes. I just she remembered Emma Roberts. Okay, okay. So here's some fun facts from the movie. I know we did a whole episode on this last year, so you're gonna get more of these. Uh, the screenwriter uh, was inspired by Halloween and some real murders that took place in Gainesville, Florida. Um, because, you know, all good stories are connected to Florida. Discovery Plus just actually released a documentary about Ooh. these Gainesville murders, and it's called Scream the True Story. So if you like true crime, that might be right up your alley. Uh, Drew Barrymore was supposed to play Sidney Prescott. Um, this actually convinced Wes Craven to sign on. However, Drew then changed her mind and said she wanted to play the girl who instantly died. So the audience would think no one was safe. And it worked. Um, especially since like, I remember her being on all the posters yes. and she, well, like, she was the title character on right. she's, her name is up there. And right. Well, she's the biggest one on the poster too. Then you, In the trailers, you never see her past, like, which is obviously the beginning of the movie. So that's well, always the hello. Right that's always it. Hello there. What's your favorite scary movie? Who is this? I know what Lauren's favorite scary movie is. What is it? Jeepers. Jeepers. Oh, no, no, no. Where'd you get those now. peepers? Podcast over. Jeepers. Nope, creepers. I'm leaving. Where'd you get How those do I <laughs> Anyways, We're not continue. talking about that movie. <laughs> so, next fun fact. Uh, the infamous mask was found at a spot near where they were location scouting, so it was kind of a happy accident. Linda Blair makes a cameo as a news reporter. Um, she is Re Reagan from, I've seen that movie, The Exorcist. Oh, yeah, surprisingly. 
Billy Loomis is named after Dr. Loomis in Halloween. And at one point when filming the opening scene, someone forgot to unplug the phone that Casey uses to call the cops, which is Drew Barrymore. This resulted in a real yes. very confused 911 operator hearing Drew Barrymore screaming for her life on the phone. Uh, um, yeah. And then there was one other fun fact. Wes Craven does make a cameo dressed as basically Freddy Krueger, but he's like mopping the floors. It's when the Fonz comes out and he's like, hey. And then you see Wes Craven dressed as Freddy Krueger going, what? Well, and if you want to watch any of these movies, they're all on Paramount+. Plus. They are, but if you have a Samsung TV, Paramount Plus doesn't work on Samsung for some reason. I don't know why. You've been forewarned, though. Trust works me. Works on Fire Stick. Yeah, well... A uh, fun fact about the Freddy Krueger shirt. So the reason why it's red and green together is because psychologically, for some reason, those colors create some sort of disturbing those reaction in your, well, they, re, well, t together for some reason, they create some sort of like disturbing reaction, I guess, which is why they did that as a sweater. Anyways, the next That's film. Josh gets so disturbed at Christmas time in our house. Apparently. I don't know. All right, do one of your movies and then I'll do Identity. Yeah, I don't really know that movie. So I'm going to so go bad. ahead and I'm going to do Cabin in, in that the movie? Woods. I'm shocked. I think I have. Was that the movie where like there's a radio involved or something? I don't know. There's radios in lots of movies. Nope, never mind. I read the plot. I, I, oh, I are you talking about um um Candy Cane? That's a CB no, radio. I don't know. Anyways, Cabin in the Woods Joy is Red. what I'm going to go with. This movie stars Chris Hemsworth, if you haven't paid attention. It's about a group of teenagers or college kids, whatever you want to call them, the youth. And they go up to a cabin in the woods and some things ensue. I don't really know any fun facts because me, when I prepared for this podcast, I went ahead and was going to talk about the twist. But then Lauren was like, hey, we probably shouldn't spoil it for some people. And I was like, you know, you're right, I guess, because even though these things have been out for a while, some there people. some fun facts. You can read All right, well, facts. I don't. Okay, so the wolf head had powder sugar on it. That's a fun fact. There's a full list of monsters to include a nod to Sin City, which is a very good movie starring Bruce Willis. Fun fact. And then the main characters were inspired by Breakfast Club, which each of them were having their own outlook on life, being from different backgrounds, which makes sense because Chris Hemsworth, like the jock, all that stuff. Very good movie. Got a lot of good stuff that happens in this. Again, it's very hard for me to talk about these movies, especially as I've been drinking and not spoil them. So. Cabin in the woods, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one when we I asked uh, you know, people what's your favorite movie that had a twist? Sean from Metal Core Nerds actually yeah, said Cabin yeah, in the yeah. Woods. Shout out to and what's boy, funny Sean, is anniversary. Josh and I watched that movie years ago and I didn't remember it at all until I read your spoiler oh. that you wrote in the notes and I was like, ah. <laughs> This is one of Carrie's favorite Halloween horror movies, funny enough. So I remember not loving it. But this was like we watched a while ago to where like because Josh will be like, oh, let's watch a scary movie and it'll be like April. And I'm like, no, the only way I'm OK with watching horror movies is if there's bats on the wall and, and I can eat pumpkin Reese's. God damn it. There you go. And because then it's not less scary. It's more festive. True. I don't know. Here's the thing. I've gotten a lot better and I thank The Walking Dead for this. But scary movies used to give me nightmares. Um, Hold on. The big rumor right now being reported is that Harrison Ford's going to be playing uh, General Ross in the Captain America 4 movie. I'm okay with that. I'll allow it. Yeah. But he has yeah. to play a dick. Does he ever really play a dick other than maybe at the end of Harrison what Ford's literally a dick in everything he plays in. Just listen. No, but to he's a talk. charismatic dick. Thunderbolt yeah. was not a charismatic dick. He was well, just. He's going to be now. So, like, anyways. I mean, at the very end of What Lies Beneath, I felt like he was a dick. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. He's 80 years old. Let's, let's not do this. I know he is 80. Um, okay. My next movie is Identity, which came out in 2003, featuring John Cusack, Ray Liotta, Amanda Peet, Alfred Molina, and a bunch of other people. Um, this is a mystery thriller throughout the entire thing. So it's almost like a whodunit, but yeah. there's a big twist. Um, so they're stranded at a desolate Nevada motel during a nasty rainstorm, and 10 strangers become acquainted with each other when they realize they're being killed off one by one. So I did not see the ending coming. It's so much more than you think it is. I highly recommend this movie. I actually put it on and, and started to get sucked in and had to turn it off because I didn't have time to watch the whole movie. Um, several different endings were filmed in order to shroud the real conclusion in secrecy. Ray Liotta's character was asked where he was heading with his con, and his reply was to Carson City. Um, John oh. Cusack 
was in the movie Con Air 1997, where the cons took over. Yes, Con Air. God, and I Carson love that movie. City. Isn't Con Air the best movie ever? It is. <laughs> Wait. So a life size dummy was created to depict one of the murdered characters with a baseball bat lodged inside their throat. And one of the studio execs asked to keep the dummy as a souvenir, and he stored it in his office closet. And one night, a cleaning lady opened the closet and was terrified. So the dummy was removed from the offices immediately. Oh. So although Identity is not a direct remake of the novel slash film, and then there were none, which is sometimes referred to as Ten Little Indians, written by Agatha Christie, the film does take several plot points from that story. And if you want to watch that, it is on Netflix. All right. All right. your next pick? All right. I'm going to go a two for one here. American Horror Story Season 1 and Haunting on Hill House. Both have pretty mm. good twists. And I loved Haunting on Hill House. Yes. So uh Haunting on Hill House is pretty good. It's got it's a very slow burn. So if you're impatient, then you probably shouldn't watch it. However, but I it's highly connected recommend to it. Midnight Mass and the other one. So if you like well, any of those, it's yeah, it's not so connected, but it's the same like writers same and some people. of the same actors. Yeah. So there's one called Midnight Club out right now, which we started last night. I fell asleep halfway through episode one because I'm an old man. If you start anything past like seven o'clock at night, I'm gonna fall asleep. And American Horror Story season one, which actually has a lot of really well-known people such as Lady Gaga have appeared in this anthology series, but uh, season one was probably the best one. So those are my two for ones right there. Go watch them. I'm going to throw you in a third one before you go in and say Friday the 13th part one. And a lot of people know Jason Voorhees in the Friday the 13th series. There are 12 films in the Friday the 13th series total and a lot of people don't realize that he doesn't get the ski mask or the, yeah, the hockey mask until the, the third film. So that's a little nugget right there. However, most people often forget the first film entirely, which, which I, somebody died in scream because of that. Didn't they? Yes. So I did know that twist because of scream. Okay. Well, you can spoil that one. I'm going to spoil it. It's, it's a 1980 oh, film. It. My God, if you haven't watched it. Hey, I'm 19- talking about Psycho and I'm not going to spoil it. So yeah, so Friday the 13th, a lot of people don't realize that the very first film was actually Jason Voorhees' mom, Pamela Voorhees, who is the murderer. And everyone forgets this fact. She's revenging his death because all the camp counselors were off having filthy sex, as she says. And Barry Moore got that one wrong. They let him die. And so he was actually originally not supposed to be disabled at all, but they made him disabled. And so... She comes back, kills the camp counselors and all that stuff. And he doesn't actually really appear until the second film. So the more you know, folks, the more you know. That's why we're here to educate. Exactly. Do you consider Sixth Sense a scary movie? No, but it is supernatural. Okay. There's some scary scenes. Like when Haley Joel Osment like, runs into his people. tent. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are dead people Josh literally everywhere. He's like, I don't think this constitutes as like a horror movie, but it is scary. It's not a horror, but it's like a supernatural thriller. It's so intense. I would, see, I would consider it. I, I'll allow it. See, those used to be the only, I guess, scary movies I would watch. Oh God. But see, I'm venturing out. How many of these ridiculous? How many Christmas horror movies did I watch last year? Oh, not enough and yet. I still lost to you in friggin' trivia. I can't um, say. Okay, so six cents. Bruce Willis was forced to do this movie, not necessarily forced, but uh, it was the first of two movies that he owed Disney after he shut down another production. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. Apparently he's difficult nature, which we saw that with. Oh, and then they mentioned Kevin Smith. I didn't actually research these ones before. So tales of Willis's difficult nature as an actor are legendary in Hollywood, such as his drama with Kevin Smith. However, according to IMDb on the set of the Broadway baller, he ended the movie for good after firing the director. As part of his Disney contract, he was signed on to The Sixth Sense and another less successful movie, which was The Kid. Um, (laughs) That's funny. Another thing he had to sacrifice his freedom to choose projects was his usual salary. He paid a measly $10 million, or he was paid a measly $10 million for The Sixth Sense. Half of his usual salary at the time. A measly $10 million. Oh, that's old. Donnie Wahlberg lost 43 pounds for this role. I didn't wow, know that that I was him he was the even first in this. Time yeah, he's the, <laughs> do you know why people are scared of the dark? I do. Wow. I didn't know that was him. And I remember finding that out and being like, wait, what? From New Kids on the Block? Like, that was crazy. New Kids on the Block. Had a bunch of hitch. Chinese food makes me sick. 
Oh. Or you could go another route. New Kids on the Block did something else too. The Eminem version. They okay. created the Wahlburgers. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the Wahlburger <laughs> by us shut down during COVID. I'm, I oh, thought it was sucks. really There's good. one outside yeah. of Fenway Pack. I loved Wahlburgers. Um, so if you want to watch Six Sense again, because I'm sure everybody's seen it, it's on Hulu and Peacock, or you can rent it from Amazon. What you got next? All right. Well, what I have next is Saw. Yeah. Have you seen Saw? I actually, I saw the one with Donnie Wahlberg. Oh my God. I'm so almost proud of you. Yes. I think that was the third or fourth one. Uh, Yeah, I don't remember. Anyways. Yes. So Saw 1. It's about a dude who wants, do you want to play a game? And they have to do certain Jigsaw. things from there. Jigsaw. It spawned so many fucking crazy spinoffs. But. Saw one has a really good twist. I'm just going to go through the rest of my list because I'm full of spoilers. So I'm going to finish my list off here real quick. Saw one orphan. So if you remember orphan, she gets adopted into a family. She starts killing said people. There's a very good twist there in that movie. They actually just made a second one, which you can find on Paramount plus the mist Stephen King's ending in the book is vastly different than Stephen than the movies ending. And he actually likes the movie ending better and it's probably one of the more messed up movie endings that I have personally ever seen. So in my last one, not a good twist, but the village. And that's it. I M. never Night- saw this, <laughs> but I heard people were pissed about it. It's an M night Shyamalan movie, which is depicted as a cult that stays in the woods. If they go in the woods, they get killed by monsters. And this is really when the M night Shyamalan, like he's known for movies, but his twists and everything he tries to do suck that's where this comes from so there you have well, it, I mean, his twist in six cents was good yeah and that was um, the last good movie real quick since we are recording live i'm just going to shout out to people in the comment section real quick my mom said andor is fantastic uh so mike said um oh he's the one that said breaking news harrison ford is thunderbolt ross and captain four question mark yeah. uh so mike is the one that got to stay at tony stark's cabin and facetimed me while he was there and showed me what all i'm missing because it looks amazing and i really need to do that josh my husband is a liar jeepers creepers is not my favorite i did not know he instigated you to sing that song that was really messed up <laughs> oh my mom even said you're gonna be in trouble for that <laughs> look we're part of the scooter gang say so after i remember the movie wrong turn oh yeah i remember that movie yeah okay so after i saw that movie i had nightmares of like creepy little people shooting me with arrows Ooh, I've come a long way. I've been told I should rewatch Jeepers Creepers. I'm never going to do that again. I'm going to. Okay. I kind of want to. Anyways. The Others is my next recommendation from 2001 starring Nicole Kidman. Uh, the Ninth Doctor is actually in this. And uh, this one involves kids. And movies are always creepier if there's kids in them. Yeah, that's why I did a haunted house theme of kids. Oh, man. So Nicole Kidman plays a woman whose kids are allergic to sun. And her husband's off at, uh, at war. I think it's World War II. And she soon thinks her house is haunted and oh. like things are getting moved and she's hearing sounds. Um, did not see the twist coming at all. Uh, Kidman was hesitant to take the role as she didn't want to do something so dark. Some of the scenes were actually lit by candles. And um, yeah, you can't find this anywhere except YouTube for some reason. But this right. movie, I remember the twist like blowing my fucking mind. And then, of course, you know, it's one of those that then you kind of look back and you think things through and then it's like, oh. <laughs> Oh, it's like Sixth Sense when you walk back, you're like, no, but he was talking to the mom in the room and then you go back and watch it. No, they weren't. They were both just sitting there. Yeah. So and then my last one before. I, well, no, I have I think I have two more. Couple so more. Haunted Mansion. Have you seen the Haunted Mansion from 2003 with Eddie Murphy? Of course. We we're actually going to we watch it every year. OK, so this one is way creepier than I feel like it has any business being. It really low key is. And it really gets swept under the rug, too. So it's, you know, like I said, it's Eddie Murphy. He's a dad who works too much. They do real estate. Uh, Mom and dad both work together at Evers and Evers Real Estate. And you'll be, what, happy forever? Evers Evers and Evers Real Estate. Uh, So mom and the kids want to go on a vacation, but they have to swing by this listing first. And, of course, it's the Haunted Mansion. And, you know, it's nice because if you've ever been on the ride, you get the whole background of Master Gracie and who he is. I did do the ride one time, but I don't really remember it. You've only been on Haunted Mansion once? Okay. You've never watched a single movie in your life, so who's judging who here? You've only been on Haunted You've Mansion never right watched now. A Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984? Okay. Nope. Exactly. Oh, Take your judgmental me, eyes me, elsewhere. Me with that deviant behavior. 
Um, so it definitely, I, I thought it had a twist. It took me by surprise at the end. There was one little thing. It wasn't a huge plot twist, but there was something that was pretty big that was a twist. I was really just surprised how creepy it is. Yeah. Um, but there's so much straight out of the ride. For those of you who have been on the ride more than once, you might pick up on those little nuances. Uh, there's a scene where there's a crow that shows up and he like just caws at Eddie Murphy and it's inside the house. This is actually a nod to the ride. If you remember the ride, there's crows in every room. There'll be like one crow in each room and they're kind of just sitting there just like moving. They don't really have anything to do with any of it. But back, you know, every all the sound comes out of your doom buggy. But back in the day when you went into a room, the crow was saying everything. So they upgraded to the doom buggy. So that I was a cute little nod. The, the dad, Eddie Murphy, and the kids had to watch mom suck face with the ghost. I love that scene. He's like, that's not your mom. <laughs> They're like, sure, dad. <laughs> <laughs> the outside of the house is a complete facade, as is the road, the dead trees, and the swamp area. So Disney Imagineers created all of that. Some of the tombstones from the actual ride were borrowed for the movie. So not just like we're copying this tombstone. It was the actual tombstones. Oh, right on. And of course, you can find this on Disney+. Plus. Hello. Little quick nod to Supernatural because they have a multiple scary episodes and... Dude, the they got good twists, man. A lot of times you don't see that shit coming. I think my last thing is Psycho. So this yeah. is the one. Well, they Josh advertised the main said. girl into this movie, and Al Alfred Hitchcock actually used to cut his own trailers, so he did a really good job deceiving everybody. That's all. So I have. this movie was spoiled months before its release. Hmm. Um, Hitchcock financed it himself. There was visible holiday decor in the area, which is the only reason they decided to have it be December. It was the first movie to feature a toilet. Really? Interesting. Yep. The more you know, kid, again, the more you know. You got to be shitting me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one was shitting anyone. Until shitting bricks. <laughs> uh, Hitchcock told movie theaters not to let any late shows in. And this last fun fact, which I think a lot of people have heard, that they use chocolate syrup. Yeah, as the blood well, it was, it was black, black and white. white. Yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Like, when you do the the background of WandaVision, if you watch the making of it, like, they, they had to use, like, blue lipstick and random shit Ooh. for black and white. And, yeah, that's the last one I got. Josh recommended that one. That does have a twist. I think everyone knows that twist. It's true um everybody kind of knows a twist and uh, these movies are all good there's there's a ton more different movies and if oh, you, you have any more i don't have a Did few more i'm done yeah orphan i talked about the all these i said i i just went through my list because i can't spoil because i spoiled them in the notes so i i couldn't spoil out loud because i don't want people to be spoiled other than you you've already been spoiled so now you know what to expect if you True. ever Orphan's watch these one movies. i hadn't seen i was gonna watch it I am sure you were. <laughs> and so I that's all I have. I have nothing else. Halloween season is upon us, folks. That is kind of our list of movies that you should check out if you want to watch a good movie with a twist. Next week. Is next week our commentary week? No. Next week, oh. I think we should be doing the theme parks, which we said we were going to do last week. We shouldn't even say we're doing that next week because a lot of times it changes. <laughs> All right, so next week is either going to be a Nightmare on Elm Street 1984 commentary track because Lauren's never seen it, or you're going to get yeah, the theme Halloween parks and Disney theme parks and, and Disney Halloween movies such as Halloween Town, which is one of the greatest Halloween movies Disney has ever produced. Mm -hmm. So guess what? The fun is all in the whatever happens. So yeah, we, we tried a little something new tonight. We went live through our Facebook uh, I can't guarantee that's going to happen again. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. If you tuned in, you want to see more of it, let us know. If you're listening on the podcasting platforms, thank you so much. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Take a drink. Ha ha. But if you want to help the show, patreon.com slash hopsgeeknews. Go to hopsgeeknews on all of your podcasting platforms and social media platforms. Help us out here. Uh, we want to do dope stuff. We want to continue to do really cool things like make a cons coming up. We're going to try to get press passes for that. And just continue to bring you really great content. So shout out to you guys for listening to us, helping us. And uh, shout out to Josh, who's part of the Scooter Gang for life. Shout out to everybody else. And next week, it's a surprise to even myself. And I'm a part surprise, of the show. Motherfucker. That said, we really appreciate you guys. Happy Halloween. Go watch a spooky movie. I'm going to go watch Evil Dies tonight, a.k.a. Halloween Kills. And cheers. Cheers. <laughs>